Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India talk about the character based uh, approach to leadership uh, in which uh, uh, we will talking about uh, uh, that is how this uh, character based uh, approach to leadership uh, it works uh, and uh, it is more influential. Authentic leadership, what is authentic leadership theory? Socialized charismatic leadership, uh, principle centered leadership, uh, servant leadership, traditional leader versus uh, servant leaders, uh, the art of war versus Bhagavad Gita philosophy uh, uh, and uh, as usual uh, these uh, uh, the research papers, case study and the book recommendations uh, uh, we will be uh, sharing with you and the further references uh, for the study. Um, the, the Evolio and his associates have defined ethical leadership. Uh, in the previous session we have talked about that is the moral leadership, right. So, two core components the moral person and the moral manager. So, in, in the next discussion with that particular uh, on the leadership, uh, it is becoming very, very important that is the uh, what we are having the moral person and the moral manager uh, that is the uh, principal decision maker who cares about people and the broader society. I will go like to give the example of the WTP water treatment plant and uh, whenever we are talking about the uh, water treatment plant, uh, mm, uh, then uh, the establishment of the uh, uh, water treatment plant and uh, taking care of the environment that will be also the example of the uh, moral person and the moral manager. Uh, however, it is legally compulsory, but uh, many times the organizations some legal compulsions they do not follow. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, but uh, the some uh, organizations uh, they are strictly follow these things. So, th then they, uh, such organizations culture will be called the moral manager is working uh, uh, with the uh, uh, full commitment to the society. They are the authentic leaderships and the servant leadership. So, whenever we are talking about uh, uh, two prominent approaches uh, for the moral person and moral leadership ap approach to the leadership, right. So, then then it, it, it will be one is that is uh, according to the your position to the that particular authority uh, as a authority and uh, another one is and that is about the servant leadership is there. So, when we talk about the authentic leadership know uh, who they are, know what they believe in and values, right and act on those values and belief openly and candidly is there. So, the authentic leadership is uh, uh, the followers consider them the ethical people and the primary quality produced by the authentic leadership therefore, is trust, right and whenever we are talking about the uh, that uh, authentic leadership is there. So, they believe that uh, because the, they, are, they are morally uh, right in their approach, so they have the trust is there and people also have the trust in them. Authentic leaders is the share the information, encourage the open communication always that is the, uh, the between the leader and follower uh, they, they, they will uh, have these uh, open communication um, uh, and by the understanding the values, uh, principles, uh, the ideas uh, and the opinions uh, of uh, the others and therefore, that a collective, collective wisdom and collective decision will be taken and stick to their ideals and the result people come to have faith in them and we, because they are having this uh, uh, first and foremost is that is the uh, they are having the trust and, the, uh, and the, uh, whatever the people say then they, they will be having uh, that particular information uh, and interacting with the people talking to them and asking them that is the what is their uh, uh, idea, what are their ideas are there and accordingly on the base of their ideas they take the decisions and then that is why the people have the faith in them. Authentic leaders exhibit a consistency between their values, their beliefs and their actions. So, many times uh, the theoretically you may not be knowing your values uh, to title those values, 
but yes uh, um, I am sure that is the uh, for example, the integrity, integrity uh, that value system uh, that um, uh, most of us are having this value system. So, therefore, uh, in that case uh, uh, that that is the, the, the organization leader because they are the leaders position because they, uh, they, have pro they have proven their values. So, whenever we are talking about these managers, leaders uh, and the leadership positions, so they are at the leadership position because, uh, because they, have pro uh, they have proved that is they, they are carrying the values and that is why they have reached to this particular uh, position. So, their beliefs and their actions are uh, uh, which has been the uh, uh, always uh, seen as a consistency is there and uh, as there is a consistency about their behavior, then they are having uh, that is the uh, always uh, try to do the right things. So, including the treating others with the respect and dignity. So, always uh, they will have that uh, uh, they will uh, have this, this particular understanding about uh, that is the whoever is working. L now, you see that is an authentic leadership also you will find the team building is very effective because the authentic leaders they are taking care of the uh, this respect and dignity of others. Whatever the small uh, uh, position person is there mm, junior management level is there mm, or it is the top management level is there. So, it is not like this that is the those who are the uh, uh, up in hierarchy only I will uh, take care of them that is not the situation rather than it is always that is the we are having this consideration uh, for them. Mm, that is they, they have to um, uh, have the right uh, to have protect their dignity. The, uh, the authentic leadership they balance the processing uh, and in then internalized moral perspective, uh, relational transparency is there and self awareness is there and it is not like this that is the authentic leaders are concerned with others only and respect and dignity for others. They have the self respect and dignity also and therefore, they, they are aware that is the what they want, what is their value system, uh, what type of the con consistency in their beliefs is there and therefore, as per their belief and they will be working with the uh, other team members uh, and the group members. So, that uh, they, they, they can influence their behavior and can get work done. So, the, it, it, it is the internalization better and better if you are having this uh, self awareness you will be having the better internalization. Once you know the better internalization and yourself then you know about your strengths and weaknesses also. So, leaders is supposed to know uh, his own strengths and weaknesses and uh, these moral values, moral system, the belief system right uh, interaction with others. So, this, this will be the strength of that leader uh, and that will be always uh, seen. The, the study of authentic leadership has gained considerable momentum in the last decade uh, and enhancing this self awareness as I was mentioning about that is uh, how it helps in organizations find more meaning and connection at work, uh, promoting the transparency and openness in relationships. So, even better leader and uh, followers build trust and commitment and uh, fostering more inclusive structures and practices in organizations can help build more positive ethical climates are there. So, here you will find it is the whenever we are talking about the um, uh, uh, more positive and ethical climate. Uh, so, they will build that uh, 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 positive and ethical climate will be built. So, uh, how they built by practices right and what they practice? They practice the trust and commitment. So, whenever uh, this type of environment is there interaction you see that is between the group mem team members and the leader whenever there is an interaction. So, on basis of that interaction uh, they are able to create that environment right and uh, that culture and climate that, that, that will be leading to the organization. In authentic leadership as usual with uh, every leadership the future focus is required need to examine how authentic leadership is viewed across situations and cultures. So, what type of the situation is there and what type of the culture is there then that is required uh, to be seen and universally prescribed positive root construct meaning in represents the base of good leadership regardless of uh, form of executive uh, examples of the participative directive or inspiring is there. So, irrespective of whatever the style of these uh, the leadership is there 
whether it is the participative is there direct to style and inspiring style which we have talked uh, in the earlier sessions uh, right and there uh, so here you, you will find um, every every style of leadership is having the base right and that ba base is uh, that is uh, the root construct is here is that is the how is this uh, culture is playing the role uh, and uh, whether it is universally universally prescribed a positive root construct is there or not a great deal of energy and interest is emerging in the leadership development uh, literature that suggests there will be a lot more activity in trying to discover what impacts uh, genuine leadership development um, at multiple levels of analysis and the from the cognitive point of view is there. So, the, the, the future focus uh, about the uh, authentic leadership th uh, is this that is the we, we have to find out how it is, it is becoming the more and more universal. The uh, uh, define the top most desirable qualities a leader can have as actionable behaviors anyone can develop over time because this is supported by the moral. It is having the transparency, it is having the respect and dignity for others, it is having the working togetherness. So, therefore, in that case, in the, the whatever he follows, that is actionable behavior is there. He is getting work done also, he is uh, result oriented. It is not like this, that is the only the behavioral science and cognitive is there, but rather than the delivery of the task is also there. Authentic leadership theory is a set of qualities, values and skills someone should possess. So, there are four components of authentic leadership. The first one is the self-awareness. A uh, leader should be familiar with both how they view themselves and how others see them. This is also. So, um, the image uh, of the leader uh, and what is the perception of the leader. Perception for the self and the image for the others. And perhaps most importantly, how their actions affect those around them for better or worse. This is very very important point. That is the your presence. You can simply judge uh, uh, whenever you are uh, present in your family uh, or in a social gathering. The people surrounding to you, how is their behavior towards you? How friendly they are? How comfortable they are? How protected they feel? How how, how friendly they feel? Uh, how strong they are having the trust in you? That you can find out. A second is the transparency. Having clear motives for ever, uh, every action is very important. For authentic leadership, strong communication skills are essential along with the tact. So, yes, you will be having the different tactics uh, there, but uh, then, then there is a requirement of the strong communication skills and transparency. So, when I com uh, connect the transparency and um, communication and the tact, uh, then in that case, the whatever the leader is doing, no? He should communicate why he is doing, what is the purpose, what is the goal, what is the intention. Being able to navigate the dynamics of teams, tasks and project needs are essential in authentic leadership, so that the each area is served to the fullest without sacrificing another is there. So, the, uh, this, this transparency and working style that will be balance the team also, then that will be also helping to perform the task and it will also help the project of the organization. Strong sense of morality. An inner compass that guides decision making helps keep the workplace discussions fair and equitable is there. So, the, uh, here it, it is very very important that is the whatever the discussion is there and that is a fair discussion. Fair discussion means without biasness and whenever there is a without biasness any discussion is there then definitely in that case you will find uh, that is the, that uh, organization is creating their particular work uh, uh, positive work environment. Scholars have tried to integrate the ethical and charismatic leadership by advancing the ideal of socialized charismatic leadership, right. So, this is this is the uh, wonderful uh, uh, that uh, acceptance of the charismatic leadership is there. You, we have talked about the charismatic leadership. Uh, if you remember in earlier sessions, we have talked about uh, the charismatic leadership. Now, when we are talking the advancing the idea of socialized charismatic leadership. In socialized charismatic leadership that conveys other centered not self centered values by leaders who model ethical conduct. And therefore, in that case uh, uh, here it is in the, in the charismatic leadership what we have discussed we have discussed that is the he made the transformation transformation uh, of the organization maybe the transactional or transformational and then leading to the charisma. But here 
when you are talking about socialized leader, charismatic leadership who, who, who model the ethical conduct, who is not the self centered, but rather than the model the ethical conduct is there. So, socialized charismatic leaders are able to bring employees values in line with their own values and therefore, in that case it is a proper alignment. It is, it, it is the uh, connect, connect between the, the own values and the followers values and therefore, whenever we talk about the uh, that is the socialized charismatic leadership in which the followers they are well connected uh, with the leaders. Principle centered leadership, this approach has developed and popularized by Kobe. It postulates a fundamental interdependence between the personal, the interpersonal, the managerial and the organizational level of leadership is there. right? So, it starts from the individual and it goes up to the organization. The unique role of each level may be thought of like this personal level. The first imperative to be a trustworthy person and it depends on both one's character and competencies there. This is very, very important. The leader's own character and competence that will decide where the organization will go. Uh, only if one is trustworthy can only have trusting relationship with others. Interpersonal relationships that lack trust are characterized by self-protective efforts to control and verify each other's behavior. Right, and always whenever the uh, you see that uh, whenever we talk about the leadership, uh, then then the, the, the trust is required. But when whenever there is a lack of trust, what will happen? leader will try to control right and uh, the, this particular approach to try, try to control the others and that 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 will create uh, that will create the chaos in the team building managerial in the context of the trusting relationship will a manager risk empowering others to make full use of their talents and energies and they have uh, here that managerial ship so, leaders has to also uh, ex, uh, exercise the managerial ship, they take the, they take the managerial ship as an instrument. Uh, even, even when an empowering style leading a high performing group depends on skills such as team building, delegation, communication, negotiation and self management is there. And uh, whenever we are talking about uh, uh, these uh, team building and delegation communication, then uh, all these functions, functions of the manager, so they will be the uh, managerial centered leadership will be there. Organizational level, level and organization will be most creative and productive when it is structured systems. Right. So, organization culture, organization systems, organizational uh, practices, right, uh, the organization structure of hierarchy. So, this uh, all, all strategy and vision of the uh, vision statement of the organization, all these will be having the aligned and mutually supportive. But if they are put differently, then definitely in that case, it will be very difficult to nurture and reinforce the behavior, ethical behavior. So, unless and until there is an alignment and collaboration, it will not work. Uh, after uh, this authentic leadership, we will talk about the servant leadership. The phrase servant leadership was coined by the Robert K. Greenleaf when he used it for the first time in an essay that was published in 1970. Servant leaders go beyond their own self interest and focus on opportunities to help uh, uh, followers grow and develop. They do not use power to achieve ends. They emphasize persuasion, the approaches, right? So, therefore, here you will find traditional leadership versus the servant leadership is there. And therefore, that is whenever we are talking about the role of directors, you know, at the bottom of the pyramid. So, the pursuing, accepting stewardship and actually developing the followers potentials are there. And uh, here from the diagram you can see like this uh, uh, that is the how uh, whenever we are talking about uh, uh, the employees. So, those employees, those managers right, they are, they are, bec uh, they are, bec they are have the empowered. Uh, because of the servant leadership uh, behavior, always this type of this uh, um, the culture which will be developed into the organization, it will always support, always support to the employees to develop a part particular style of the understanding and, and the growth and development is there. So, whenever uh, the, the leaders, so here the leaders are not of the self focus, right, are the self interested, rather they are focused towards, towards the followers. Lao Tzu in, uh, uh, in, the, the, in six, uh, 600 BC, the greatest leader forgets himself and attends to the development of others. 
right? So that is that is the servant leadership is there. In the Chanakya's Arthashastra 375 BC, the leader shall consider as good not what pleases himself, but what pleases his subjects. Subjects means there is followers, right? A beautiful definition given by Chanakya. That is the, um, a leader will be called a leader, right? So, that is whatever he is doing, he is not doing for self, right? Well, his efforts, his direction, his goals, uh, um, uh, his uh, performance, all, all are directed uh, towards his subjects and those subjects, they should be happy, right? And they should be get benefited and that, that was the basis for the Janakya's Arth Shastra also. That is the, if you want the, that whatever the king is there, the king is required to support, support the public. And then when this, whenever we are comparing these two definitions, then we will find that is the both are having the focus towards the others, right? Whether it is the Chanakya, Chanakya's uh, Arthashastra, which has talked about the, uh, how the, uh, that a state has to be done by the king. And there, in that case, uh, the, the first and foremost priority he has given about that servant leadership. So, uh, the, the another definition of the Jesus of Nazareth, but the greatest among you shall be your servant. The one who is the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like the servant. Right? So, therefore, who is the youngest uh, that, that is the uh, uh, amongst that group, right? So, he is the greatest uh, and the leader will be like the servant is there and because the, that leader is ser ser doing the service. Then the, in the further studies in uh, by the Robert K. Greenleaf in 1970, he has given the definition. The servant leader is servant first, it begins with the natural feeling that one wants to serve, to serve first. So, what is the leadership? The leadership is to serve others and it has been said like our Prime Minister also says that I am a Pradhan Sevak, right? That is uh, I am the servant leader. So, here it becomes very, very important that is that is the orientation uh, and uh, the, the, the strategies, leadership strategies, right? Le leadership functions, leadership vision. That, that, that is uh, not uh, self-centric, rather than it is, it is always towards the servicing the others is there. Whenever in any organization, when the top management, right, uh, I would like to give the example of Ratan Tata also. So, whenever we are talking about the top management, uh, then the top management is becoming the uh, very, very um, uh, uh, this uh, uh, popular or uh, the, the uh, considered or appreciated by whenever the top management is having that feeling that is the, it is to serve the society. The purpose of business is to serve the society. The servant leader, what are the characteristics are there? Be a good listener, uh, have the empathy, heal those around you is there, right? So, I will start with the healing is there. Now, now this is very, very important. Is capable of the healing people with a focus on their emotional health and feeling of completeness. So, in the organizational ownership, organizational citizenship behavior, the person who is spending his 30 years, 40 years in the organization, then what he requires? He requires the emotional healing from the employer. And those employers, those who are having that emotional healing, and then, then they definitely those employers will be well appreciated. And it is not the popularity of employer only. The employees will be giving their best. Be aware, several leaders are fully aware of themselves and their people are there. So, uh, it is a personal touch. They are in contact. And therefore, in that case, you will find that is the whenever uh, they are talking about uh, uh, this uh, relationship between the uh, a, a servant uh, uh, and the uh, servant leader and the f follower. So then, in that case, uh, that he is becoming the uh, very very crucial uh, uh, the healing factor, emotional connect, persuade without being forceful. A good leader is capable of convincing people in different ways. Is there right? So, therefore, in that case, but naturally uh, to serve the others uh, first uh, you will ask uh, that is the do they deserve or not. So, some of them they may not be agree with you. So, what is required? Convincing people in different ways. Hmm? He should be able to convince the people is there. Conceptualize and communicate a vision. A servant leader can help build a concept for people. A concept for people that works. 
that is the um, what is required fulfill their requirements commitment is there those who main focus in the people and this makes the leader fully committed to their growth and development is there build a community the leader should be able to walk with and among the people so that the leader can help them by serving and building a community is there so ultimately what he does that is by this particular commitment he is able to create a community uh, around to him and to serve the organization in the channel uh, foresight is a good leader can anticipate future events and how they will impact everyone and therefore that channel foresight will be there and whenever uh, a leader who is a visionary basically right and therefore he will have the uh, always the impact on the uh, everyone is there however uh, there are certain myths and misconception of the servant leadership uh, because some people believe uh, that is that the servant leadership does not work they believe that that is the there is uh, a need uh, for this particular uh, uh, the uh, servant leadership uh, uh, the the organization uh, will not be profitable right so servant leadership means giving up power to employees servant leaders empower their people coach and train them on how to use that power and hold them accountable for their actions so it is not like this that is the easy going it is the here in the servant leadership when empowerment is done so simultaneously leader make them accountable for their actions and decisions right so they cannot say no they also work to understand what their people are capable of and realize that some individuals uh, uh, may need more coaching and support than others are there right and the uh, servant leader is uh, uh, abdic uh, abdicating the responsibility for success a servant leader understands that they are ultimately responsible for the success of their employees and the success of their business if an organization's goals and objectives are not met a servant leader will look first at themselves and what they could have done better to support their people in achieving them so therefore in that case uh, uh, the always he is committed towards the goal achievements of the their followers servant leaders do not care about customers or shareholders some people think that because servant leaders focus first on the needs and interest of their employees they do not care about what the business customers or shareholders need in fact servant leaders believe the opposite the customer and the shareholders expectations can only be met or exceeded by creating motivated engaged and high performing employees is there so this is very much true that is unless and until and uh, that your employees uh, for example the service after sales right and in the case of the service after sales if the person uh, he is not focusing on what uh, uh, once the, the that product is sold and then uh, uh, there is nobody to take care for the installation of that product or the complaints in that product or the uh, monitoring and operations of that product is not uh, that has been supported then in that case definitely it 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 will become very difficult uh, uh, for the uh, uh, the organization to survive so what is required that is the they required that is, uh, that the customer and shareholders right um, with the servant leadership Now, what is that created, motivated, and engaged uh, to the high-performing employees are there, and so that motivated and the engaged high employees, uh, performing employees are possible only if you are having the ser servant leadership is there. So traditional leaders see leadership as a ring to obtain, uh, use power and control to drive performance, uh, measures the success through the output speaks, uh, believes it is about them. the servant leader um, sees leadership as an opportunity to serve others uh, share powers and control to drive engagement uh, uh, and uh, measure success through the growth and development so understand it is not uh, about uh, them and that is about the servant leader is there the art of war versus the bhagavad gita philosophy is there on material incentives uh, the art of war is the people uh, uh, need uh, extrinsic incentives to be motivated give your soldiers the share of the booty and the conquered territory is there while in the bhagavad gita never act for the material rewards uh, only focus instead on doing well and good things will follow and on the ultimate goal uh, uh, whenever we talk about the uh, the uh, uh, the winning requires cleverness and sometimes even deception according to the art of war but bhagavad gita says success means satisfying multiple stakeholders are there 
on handling the followers, the art of our role with the iron discipline, maintain uh, your authority over them, work, uh, knowing that too much kindness towards your followers could make them the useless is there, right. So, therefore, in, in that case in the art of war too much kindness that has not been allowed. While in the case of the Bhagavad Gita, enlightened leaders are selfless and compassionate towards the others, right. Followers who are treated as equals are more motivated to enthusiastically support their leaders are there and therefore, it has been seen that is a high commitment towards uh, uh, the followers in return you will get the loyalty of your followers and but it is not for this uh, uh, the interest of getting something return it is the selfless and compassionate towards the others is there. So, this this type of this uh, uh, the uh, uh, the work will be uh, uh, has been uh, encouraged uh, through the servant leadership and uh, as far as the our research is concerned uh, then the servant leadership uh, 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 my one PhD scholar has worked on this and then it is the findings are that is uh, people do not leave the organization they leave their bosses means they are not happy with the leadership style. So, it is better to have the leadership style uh, which is the servant leadership style. So, you are talented employees they continue with you. Supervisory servant leadership and an employees work role performance is there about this research paper uh, between supervisor servant leadership and employees organizational the uh, the member performance uh, and uh, uh, this paper is having the 181 uh, sales people and 83 sales managers. So, uh, the model has consist uh, that sales manager servant leadership is directly and positively related to the sales people's organization member performance. Uh, in addition, sales manager servant leadership is indirectly uh, it is related to the sales uh, sales people's organizational member performance is there. Now, uh, through the sales people's perceived organizational support uh, that is the uh, whenever there is a when the people perceive employees perceive that organizational support is there then definitely they will be coming more successful. Uh, employees with a V mentality and uh, who feel the need to serve should be selected for and promoted to the supervisors. To enhance employees perceived organizational support uh, and OID is also important as these factors will encourage the employees to behave in the best interest of the organization is there. And this is the case study. Do unethical decisions come from the bad character? And they have uh, attorney general and the governor elites which are decided to use a, a prostitution service. Why would a highly respected attorney Mark Dreher uh, with uh, uh, degrees from Harvard and Yale and a successful Park Avenue law firm decide to imper impersonate people in order to swindle and others? From the Tiger Woods to the Brainy Mordorff, it is not hard to find examples of unethical behavior, but what causes people to make un unfortunate choices? Behavior genetics research has taught us that virtually every human characteristics has generic origins and that generic differences are a central reason people differ in their behavior is there. So, this is all about this case study and uh, these are the questions. Do you think people see themselves as more ethical than they really are and, uh, uh, and you, what about you? The authors have once study noted that uh, uh, disclosures can exhibit unethical behavior by causing people to feel absorbed by their duty to be objective. Um, uh, do you agree? Why are? Why not? Is there? So these these are the questions for your uh, assignments. Uh, and uh, uh, do you think if we admitted it to ourselves times when we behaved unethically, we would be less likely to behave unethically in the future also? And uh, this is the book uh, which is recommended here, uh, how you can achieve the great relationship and the results the servant leadership uh, action is there uh, and uh, this uh, Ken uh, Blanchard and the uh, the Rains, uh, the Broadwell book is there. These are the further references uh, which you can refer for your studies and, uh, the, uh, and uh, uh, for, uh, for these notes also these references have been used. I am sure that is the you will find it uh, by going through this literature that is the uh, servant leadership uh, is becoming the more uh, uh, effective whenever we are using it uh, in our organization. These are further references. Thank you.